This morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, there's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your spouse, your church, your residence. But if you don't change your mind, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again because everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. Every, every idea you have, every mindset you have, your way of thinking, that's what your philosophy is. Your way of thinking is going to bear fruit. How you think about a thing is going to determine your whole life. How you think about a thing determines how you live. If you want to change the way you live, you got to change the way you think. You are the reflection of your thinking. You are the character of your mind. The life you live today is a, a, a manifestation of the inner workings of your mind. And that controls how people perceive you and how people relate to you on a regular basis. There are too many people who don't know the importance of the mind. The mind is a massive tool for our benefit. That mind is, is like the rudder that directs the ship. See, for your spirit, your mind is so important. If you turn your mind away from what you're supposed to be focusing on, your feeling would die. Can you see that? For whatever it is, your emotions for it. You need your emotions, your feelings, everything must come together and your mind is responsible for doing that. So you start by channeling your mind to your purpose. You set your mind, your mind helps you channel all the forces of your spirits in the direction of that focus. So you use your mind, you set your mind. You have to fix the mind before you can bestow the blessing because until they get their mind right, everything you invest in them is going to leak out of the crevices of a mind that refuses to change. Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have a mind to change? Wait for an answer. If they say no, drag them to the altar. Tell them they got till midnight to get that fix. They got till midnight to, to dump out all jealousy, all pettiness, all unforgiveness, all strife, all malice, all confusion, all blaming other people for your mistake. You got till midnight to get rid of every poison that's hindering you, every inflexibility that's stopping you from what God is about to pour into your life. Woe be unto you if you go into another year and waste another year year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now. You better step into this moment. Well, what kind of philosophy is the enemy going to use to rob you of something you already have? Vain deceit, tradition of men, Christmas, Easter money, all of that is to the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus. <laughs> sure, that, that temptation, those tests, those trials, they keep showing up because you won't allow the transformation to take place by renewing your mind. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us, and then they drag us away. And verse 15 says, these desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, 
it gives birth to death. Well, God wants all of that to be dealt with by renewing the mind, but God can't come and renew your mind for you. You've got to be willing to cooperate with God. You know, the Holy Spirit the Bible says works on the inside of us and he changes our desires to to do what pleases God and gives us the power to be able to do that. And I think the idea is, is that, you know, as Christians, we just chill out and just don't do anything. But that's why he talked about dedication first. Can you dedicate yourself to this? I mean, something happens when you renew your mind with the word. Now, I understand what what it feels like. When you're, you're, you're trying to renew your mind with the word, but you're, you're not getting the right teaching. And then the teaching becomes condemning and, and it becomes, it's, it's shaming you and all that. Well, that's, that's not, it's not being rightly divided. But when you get an understanding of how to rightly divide the word and you start letting it renew your mind, it brings freedom. And all you want to do is do what's right. You're not, you're, you're going to be more into doing what pleases God and less into doing what pleases you when you begin to really understand the gospel. And so when our minds are renewed by the word of God, and I say the word of God, I've got to be very precise, the word of God or in the New Testament or, you know, after Jesus rose from the dead, the word of God was that word of grace. And 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 I'm specifically talking about renewing your mind with that word of grace so that it can bring you to a place you've never been before. When that happens, we will overcome negative desires and we will live in God's perfect will for our lives. Now, renewing the mind is more than learning. It's changing. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my situation. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be opportunities. Oh, yes, it's going to be some struggles. It's going to be some challenges. It's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change do you have the mindset to be blessed you have to decide to be blessed you have to decide you know what this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad that I will rejoice I, as an act of my will, I've decided I'm going to rejoice. I made up my mind. I'm going to be happy. I made up my mind. I'm going to enjoy. I'm as healthy as I'm going to be. I'm as young as I'm ever going to be. I can't get any younger. I can't roll the clock back. What With what I got left, I'm going to maximize this. I will rejoice. See, that's, that's getting on somebody's nerves right now because that old mind can't rejoice. No, not me. I can't rejoice. I'm still angry. I'm not going to rejoice till they apologize. I'm not going to rejoice until he leaves that other woman. I'm not going to rejoice until my children appreciate me. You are wasting time. You have to let the past go and step over into the future and say, I I will rejoice. So you understand, there's this principle again, that it's going to be very difficult for the grace of God to have anything to do in the life of a person who has a a high uh, or exaggeration of his own self-importance because it'll be by the grace of God. But we cooperate with him by renewing our mind in that word. And we cooperate with, with the spirit of God. So most people... They become Christians and they still remain conformed to the world and all of the world's failure and all of the problems until they renew their mind. That's something I want you to you hear. I, I hope it's something that's a uh, light bulb's coming on. Like, oh, wow. So no wonder I'm still the same. Most people become Christians and still remain conformed to the world and all of its 
failure and problems until until they renew their mind. Here's my question tonight. Are you still renewing your mind? Renewing the mind is not a, a, a one-time event, and I'm going to say that over and over again. It's a lifetime process. So it's not, well, I've renewed my mind. If you, if you can say, I've renewed my mind, you're in trouble because it's, it's got to be a continuous renewing of the mind to keep you uh, from being conformed to the ways of the world. The devil doesn't mind you coming to church. <laughs> The devil doesn't mind you singing in the choir. The devil doesn't mind if you preach. The devil doesn't mind if you shout all over the church. The devil only minds if you change your mind. Now you may be born again on your way to heaven, but at the present time you're living in hell on the earth. Why? Because you're still conformed to this world. You're still fashioned and, and molded and controlled by the ways of this world. And if you're still depressed and if you're still afraid of life circumstances and you're still treating your spouse badly and you're still struggling in poverty, you're still having to see, um, uh, uh, you, you're still having to, uh, to, 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 to adjust certain things that you used to do when you were not saved. You're still having sex with someone who is not your, 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 your spouse or somebody you're married to. You're still caught up in pornography. You're still mad at the world. And then though you may be born again, you're still conformed to the world. And that's why all that happens. If you're still doing something that you thought that getting born again would stop, I'm telling you, that's not how it happens. You can get born again and don't renew your mind and you are still be caught up in the conforming, conforming to the ways of the world. And that's what that's all about. That's why people keep doing that because they have not under the importance of the word of God and renewing their mind with God's word. We keep doing our best to try to throw the Bible away and say it's just no good. And I'm telling you, it is the very uh, essence that God has provided to us as Christians for change and transformation in our lives. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative and everything that's condescending and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. The devil is a lie. You can get your family out. You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you, no witch that hexes you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the head and say, we're coming out of this. Jeremiah 4.14. He says, O Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness that you may be saved. How long shall your, your, your in, iniquitous and grossly offensive thoughts <laughs> lodge within you? You know what he's saying? There's no change until you begin to change the way you think. There's no change until you begin to change those, those, those thoughts that are, that are in your mind. Look at James chapter one, verse 13 through 15, because I know I'm challenging people, but listen, it, this is, this is all Bible. This is all scripture. It, you know, they're always going to be somebody to say, well, I don't agree with that. Well, it's cause you don't agree with the Bible. You're still trying to find a way to justify, you know, what you're doing and how you're living. And you're still trying to change the word instead of allowing the word to change you. So what it boils down to is this the battleground the 
between God and the enemy, between right and wrong, between success and struggle, between destiny or that which is derogatory. He's fighting for your mind because in your mind are your default settings. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you don't change it in your head, you can't change it in your life. I don't care whether it's losing weight. I don't care whether it's going after a job. I don't care whether it's being faithful and committed. I don't care whether it's being honest and true. It has to change up here or it won't change anywhere else. There is nothing as powerful as a change my mind. <laughs> Our environment, our associations, the fact that we were born in sin, we have a predisposition to be defaulted to depravity. Our circumstances all around us affect our default. But culture is nothing over Christ. Culture is an agricultural term, which simply means that which is planted has been encouraged to grow. And some things have been planted in you that have been encouraged to grow. The question is, are you willing to allow a new truth to be planted in place of past experiences and thereby change your mind? Or will you be imprisoned to live a future of weakness or ignorance or evil or fear, not because you don't want to be better. Esau wanted his birthright. He never got it back because he was unsuccessful at changing his mind. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. You've got to know the specific result you're after. What do you want? Why you're doing it? Because you know what? You may get a big goal as soon as I want to make a billion dollars. I want to bring peace to the earth. Why? Because as soon as you come up with a goal, all the obstacles show up. There are moments in our lives that we feel completely alone. We feel as though no one knows what we're going through. It is because of the uniqueness of the challenges that confront you are so unique to you that you feel like I'm up against it all by myself. So you got to get yourself past that. And the way to get past that is have enough reasons. Reasons come first, answers come second. To ask intelligence, you got to know why you want it, have enough drive to make it happen, enough juice to make it happen. If you don't have enough reasons, you will not make it happen. What is going to get you to actually fall through? Because the first plan's not going to work and the second plan's going to work, so you better have enough plans. If the first two don't work, you still got something else. Otherwise, you're going to be having excuses why it didn't work. In what you've done with your life thus far, is it giving you what you want? Is it giving you what you want when you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here? Is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? See, I say if you look at your life and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. If you're on a job, 85% of Americans go to jobs that they're unhappy. If you're doing something eight hours a day that you don't like, it's not giving you what you want, it's not giving you a strong feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment, if that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. And generally, that type of circumstance is born because it's not because you don't have anybody to talk to, but can you trust them? Eventually, even the most disciplined amongst us, the corners of your mouth will droop down. Your smile will turn into a frown. Eventually, even if you have to wait till everybody's gone to sleep, a tear will run across the bridge of your nose because you're dealing with stuff that is so 
deep and so complicated that you feel like you're in it by yourself. But you are not alone in the battle. You're not alone in the struggle that God has a strategy. And when it's all over, you're going to see that even though you couldn't see him, he was there all the time. Most people will resist change. Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. Most people will not challenge the unknown. They won't just step out there. See, there are certain things that's got to be in place. They've got to see it all together. And life isn't like that. That's not how you grow. As you begin to look toward the future, begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that, you got that. You've got genius in you, you've got goodness in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side. What do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up because trying again means hurting again? means risking again, means believing again, means hoping again. Sometimes you can be blessed and be unhappy because even though things are going right, they're not going according to what you had believed and expected and you know that something is missing out of your life. What do you do when something is missing out of your life and the things that replaced it do not compensate for what you lost? I've always been told how average I can be always been criticized about being average but I want to tell you something I stand here before you not listening to those words but telling myself every single day to shoot for the stars to be the best that I can be good enough isn't good enough if it can be better and better isn't good enough if it can be best turn your wounds into wisdom you will be wounded many times in your life. You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures. But I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, you're moving in the wrong direction. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Think about that. If you aren't dead, then it's just psychological. Does not mean that you won't lose some battles because you will, we all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. It just means you've made a temporary tactical retreat, a brief withdrawal so that you can regroup and reattack. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated. And you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned. You've gained experience. And you're still alive. So get up and go get after it. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. People say you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing and it's totally true and the reason is because it's so hard that if you don't any rational person would give up it's really hard and you have to do it over a sustained period of time so if you don't love it if you're not having fun doing it you don't really love it you're gonna give up and that's what happens to most people actually if you really look at, at the ones that ended up you know being successful unquote in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't oftentimes it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere you know when it got really tough and the ones that didn't love it quit. So it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of worrying constantly. If you don't love it, you're going to fail. So you got to love it, you got to have passion. 
If you think ordinary's cool, ain't no problem. It's some really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're gonna have to do extra. You put extra on top of ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. But here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities. All of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. He who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. You don't have to live worried, focused on the problems, wondering why it happened. You know a secret, you have favor in the storm. You know what was meant for harm, he's turning to your advantage. Here's the key. The enemy wouldn't be fighting you if you weren't a threat. Oh, get ready. Favor is about to turn things around. Favor is about to catapult you to a new level. Favor is not going to keep you from the storm, but favor will bring you out of the storm. We don't understand everything that happens. Sometimes life is not fair, but you have to trust that God knows what he's doing. This thing called life, you just don't know what the next moment will bring. But here's what I do know, and I want you to know, you have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to change this situation. This does not work for me. And I don't have the luxury of being depressed and angry. I need to clear my head. This is no time to do something stupid like hurt yourself. No, 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 no. So get serious about your goals, business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this. If you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. You got to clear your head so that the decision that you make represents the best in you. People who don't stop to clear their heads, they react. They don't respond. Be still and know that you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. And you don't want to be radical. You don't want to be erratic. Just be still. And no, I'm going to get through this. You got to assure yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to clear your mind. Your better future is a dream. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You've got to dream dreams. Without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for. Take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they won't die. Take the bread from hungry children, they won't cry. But without dreams, we all will die. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dreams. Becoming something unique on your journey here, don't lose your dream. That's long range goals. You've got to have those. Because if you set up something short range, go for it, get it, latch, latch onto it, work hard, accomplish it. That starts building your strong feelings to go for your dreams. Economics plays a major role in everybody's life, which means it ought to be meticulously well planned for tomorrow. The area of life that matters clearly to all of us is time. And most people have very little mastery of this. I don't mean checking things off your list. I'm meaning squeezing out of your life what matters to you most. Your career, where is it now? And where are you financially compared to where you want to be? And especially with some of the changes that have happened in the economies around the world. And then finally, where are you in your level of sense of meaning, of contribution, and your sense of celebration in life? These are the areas that really matter most. Sit down and define what this looks like for you today. And invariably what we find out is almost everybody has some gaps. Gaps between where you are and where you want to be. And even if you've done incredibly well, I mean, I deal with some of the most successful people in the world, they're usually still happy in their life because they're hungry. They haven't lost that drive that's 
says, look, what makes me feel alive is to know I'm growing. You know, if my life's going to get better, I got to get better. I can't just hope it. And if my life is going to be rich emotionally, it's got to be expanding. And they know that. If you work your tail off at work to take care of your family and be the best at what you can do, your career's going really well. Isn't that the nature of human beings? To me, successful is getting to the point where you are absolutely comfortable with yourself. It does not matter how many things you have acquired. Uh, the ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it, to me, is about the greatest success I have achieved. Uh, the fact that I have, you know, in the public side, done whatever, it's all a part of a process for growing for me. But to me, to have the, in, the kind of internal strength and internal courage it takes to say, no, I will not let you treat me this way is what success is all about. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. We tend to focus on things we feel confident in, we know what to do in, and the other stuff we kind of hope it all comes together and try not to think about it too much, but it all affects us. You gotta start with what it is you really, truly want now. You gotta start with that end in mind. And then once you understand there is a gap between where you are and where you wanna be, here's all we do. We believe that the most powerful way to change anything is total immersion. no matter what happens to you, it ain't over. As long as God wakes you up, that means he ain't through with you yet. And if he wakes you up, you got a shot to correct it and get it right. And he kept waking me up. So I figured, okay, God wakes you up. That also means that he has something for you that you've yet to receive. You could take my car, I could get another one. You could take my house, I could get another house. But when you take my time, you have taken something from me that is totally irreplaceable. Even if you are 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 doesn't matter. You're in the game now and that's what counts. And all those quote unquote wasted years, they, they weren't wasted because you learned. Learned about what it's like to be weak and the knowledge that you learned about those things is fuel to make sure that it never happens again. Because you know, you know what is out there and you know how bad it can get. I say you embrace what you learned from the weekdays. Let them make you even stronger and you use your own personal transformation that you've made in life. Use that to help other people transform and get on the path as well. If you know what it is to have the kind of pain that feels as if you cannot be confident, if you know what it is to be at the end of your rope and feel like your life is over and you've got questions that cannot be answered and you're confused and you're uncertain, you need to learn this verse, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I will never uh, forget there have been many opportunities in my life that I have grappled with grief and pain and so unbearable and so overwhelming that I thought that I would never smile again. I've seen days that were so dark for me that I thought there could not possibly be a silver lining in the clouds that hung over my head. I've seen days and weeks and months that drug me so low that I gave up all hope of getting up again. But in the midst of of all of that despair and that trouble and that trauma and that pain, there was in the basement of my soul this one word, when. When should you start the day? As soon as you have it finished. Plan the day the best you can, leaving plenty of room for improvising and surprises and all the stuff that happens during the course of the day. But if you've planned a good, productive day, now you start that day, you can't believe how much more valuable your time will be. Next, don't start the month until you have it finished. The places to go and the people to see and the productivity and the sales and the customers and the development and all the rest of what you want to accomplish during the course of 30 days. And then here's the big one. This is really challenging. Don't start the year until you have it finished to the best of your ability. It can't be finished like minute by minute, but in terms of the sweep of what you want to accomplish, make sure that that's set and ready to go 
And it might get all upset. It might get torn up and you do a new one. You make so much progress the first 90 days that now you've got, you've multiplied it all by two, by three. Because that happened to me. I thought, wow, here's how, this is going to be a great year. By the time I'd finished the third month, I'm rolling. So many things are happening. I revised my whole year's plan. Don't let anything overly bug you. Because you remember now, you don't have to do anything. Someone says, well, i got to get a handle on my time. The answer is, no, you don't. If you want to let it all go, you can let it all go. Somebody says, you ought, you ought, you ought. Jot this down. Ignore all the you oughts or you should. Take charge of your life. Take charge of your time. Take charge of your resources, which we're going to talk about next. Take charge of your health. You're the one that's responsible for it. It's not a requirement of society that you not have a heart attack and take care of your family, but you must make it a requirement of yourself. You will be okay. There's nothing has been wasted. Like I say, successful people don't make the right decisions, they make their decisions right. And you have an opportunity right now to make things right inside and out. When you say you're depressed, you've got to understand that depression is the opposite of expression. So what you're literally doing is stuffing down and depressing something that wants to come up and rise out. I wouldn't be surprised if you had like jaw, ear, or neck pain having to do with expressing yourself, speaking your truth. So, yeah, you're depressing yourself. Stop it. Speak up. Speak your truth. Now, right, once you get that off your chest, now it's time to turn the flashlight in and discover what your truth is. We are living in a generation of the dumbing down of ideas. Because we have traded effectiveness for busyness. We are so busy and we think because we're busy, we're effective. But I want you to challenge your schedule for a minute and ask yourself, are you really being effective? Or is your life cluttered with all kinds of stuff that demands you and drains you and stops you from being your highest and best self? And are you substituting busyness and all the chaos that goes along with busyness from being effective? It's easy to get faked out by being busy. Guy comes home at night all exhausted, falls in the chair and says, Oh, I've been going, going, going. Here's the big question. Doing what? It's not the going, going, going. Some people are going, 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 and they're doing figure eights. So don't mistake movement for achievement. There's a lot of things you could take from me and I could make it. You could take my suit, I got another one. You could take my car, I could get another one. You could take my house, I could get another house. But when you take my time, you have taken something from me that is totally irreplaceable. We do everything except the most important thing is to value our time. It takes time to be creative. You were meant to be creative. You have creativity. If you had time, you would be creative. Better have a valued goal, because otherwise you can't get any positive motivation working out. And so the more valuable the goal, in principle, the more the microprocesses associated with that goal start to take on a positive charge. Well, you get up in the morning and you're excited about the day, you're ready to go. What you do is you specify your long-term ideal. You do that in some sense as a unique individual. You want to specify goals that make you say, if that could happen as a consequence of my efforts, it would clearly be worthwhile. The question always is, why do something? Because doing nothing is easy. You just sit there and you don't do anything. That's real easy. And then the next question might be, well, where should you look for worthwhile things? And one would be, well, you could consult your own temperament. So you do a structural analysis of the subcomponents of human existence. And you need a family. You need friends. Like, you don't need to have all these things, but you better have most of them. Family, friends, career, educational goals, attention to your mental and physical health, etc. You know, those are that's what life is about. And if you don't have any of those things well then all you've got left is misery and suffering so that's a bad that's a bad deal for you don't mistake courtesy for consent if somebody's pleasant and they nod you say oh they're gonna buy no they're courteous you can't mistake courtesy for consent now here's a big one concentration i had to learn this all those years ago i'm in the shower trying to compose a letter found it turns out to be a strange letter so here's what i learned to do Save the work till you get to the office. Save the work till you get to the work. 
Don't try to get to the office on the way to work. On the way to work, enjoy the way. In the shower, enjoy the shower. Then go to work when you get to work. Concentration. Learn to say no. I'm telling you, in such a social society we have now, it's so easy to try to be a nice person saying yes, yes, yes to everything. Find yourself overloaded. Now you got to call and make the, well, gosh, you know, all the time it takes to back out of something that you should, said yes to too quickly. Here's what might be better. I don't think so, but if that changes, I'll call you. Little things you can use not to commit, overcommit yourself. But once you set up that goal structure, let's say, and that's really who it is that you're trying to be, you aim at that, and then you use everything you learn as a means of building that person that you want to be. And, and I really mean want to be. I don't mean should be, even those things, those things are going to overlap. That's fine, except you'll fail all the time then. You just won't know it until you've failed so badly that you're done. And that can easily happen by the time you're 40. I would recommend that you don't let that happen. Okay, so once you get your goal structure set up, you think, okay, if I could have this life, looks like that might be worth living. Anxiety provoking and threatening, and there's gonna be some suffering and loss involved in all of that. The goal is to have a vision for your life such that all things considered, that justifies your effort. Then you turn down to the micro routines. It's like, okay, well, this is what I'm aiming for. How does that instantiate itself day to day, week to week, month to month? And that's where something like a schedule can be unbelievably useful. It's like, make a damn schedule and stick to it. It's not a bloody prison. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. That's the trick. It's like, okay, I've got tomorrow. If I was going to set it up so it was the best possible day I could have, what would it look like? 